If you go to walk in your local Kia dealership looking to trade your old Optima for a new one, you might be a little bit startled. The Optima has been discontinued and replaced by these. This is the 2021 Kia K5, actually two of them to be exact. Now Kia has replaced the Optima nameplate entirely. The K5 is what the Optima was called around the world, but now here in the US, that's the name we're gonna get as well. Kia has sent me two of these in the GT line and EX trim level to check out. Let's go see what the K5 is all about. Let's start with a walk around of the two K5s where there are some very subtle differences here up in the front. You can see this G-Tilon has a little bit of a smaller grill with a different, slightly different grill pattern here. We also, you can see lower down here, this lower fascia is very different here on the EX versus how it is here on the GT line. Either one has these very cool looking headlights with the cool, uh, sort of orangey yellow daytime running lights. Those look great when you're kind of riding up behind these cars. Kia has sent me gr two great colors. I love that sort of wolf gray that they have over there. And I love this deep cobalt blue. Now both cars, even though they're different trim levels, have the same tires, 18 inch two-tone wheels. I think they look really cool. We've got color matching side mirrors here on the EX. The GT line gets black tips on those, which is really cool as well. Not too much else different here on the side profiles of the car, so to speak. Now back here, we are going to notice some bigger differences here. We've got our wraparound taillight, which is really cool. This car has a very short deck lid, giving it almost like a rear wheel drive appearance, which is pretty cool. Now, the lower fascias are very different here. We've got sort of like a black with a little bit of silver lip here on the EX. On the GT line, we've got sort of bigger faux exhaust tips. We also have a black spoiler here on the top. So again, these two cars aren't drastically different, but the GT line does look ever so slightly more aggressive. I think the color adds a lot to that as well, but I think either one is a great looking sedan, and I think this is probably my new favorite looking sedan in the midsize segment. So now that we've checked out both K5s on the exterior, let's go ahead and hop on the inside. We're gonna start with the GT line because it's lower down. And then we can check out what we get on top of that in the EX trim, which is a little bit nicer. So even though this is not the top trim of the K5, I think it still feels very premium in here. I love this steering wheel. The GT line gets this flat bottom wheel that we don't get on any of the other uh, K5s until perhaps, of course, the GT comes out later in the year. But yeah, yeah, this steering wheel as your first touch point is really nice. The shifter is not as nice. It's kind of this T-grip shifter, which is a cool design. I like how the T-grip looks, but when you kind of use it, it just kind of feels kind of clunky. Don't love how that works. Um, and the top of it is kind of this uh, chunky faux leather plasticky thing. So that's not that great. But what I do love is the red leather seats. They say GT line on them here. I think these look excellent, although they aren't heated or ventilated because this is, again, not the highest trim that you can get here. I'm not too impressed with the gauges. They're kind of basic, and so is the little helper screen you get in the middle. You know, it's got your basic functions on it, but I've seen bigger even from Kia. I wish Kia would have at least put digital gauges on this car, or at least maybe a bigger helper screen in the middle, but I wouldn't nitpick them too much on that because we do have a lot of other equipment. Uh, we have uh, automatic climate control. I do have adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, blind spot monitoring, all of that good stuff. So we do have quite a lot in here. Now this is the base head unit. It is an eight inch screen. So this is touch, but we do have these physical buttons here. And I actually like that these are physical buttons because if you see on the late on the other screen when we get in that car, th these become touch sensitive buttons. So I do like that these are physical buttons, which are a little bit easier for me to use. And the one thing I would love to point out is that Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are standard. I have an Android device, so let's go ahead and click on Android Auto. And you know, Android Auto, here it is. You know, nothing super special about that. But you know what is special? This is my phone. Where's the wire? There is no wire. That is because on this Kia K5, you have access to wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. You don't have to plug your phone in for free. 
Sorry, BMW, who charges you extra for it. For free, I have both of these features, which is excellent. I can't believe Kia was able to do that at this low of a price point. Bravo on that, not having to plug in. I think that's great. Although the same can't be said for that bigger screen. We'll get to that a little bit later. Now, you may have noticed I put my phone here. I've got my USB uh, input if I wanted to plug in to use Android Auto or Apple Car CarPlay. I also have another one for charging here and my typical car outlet 12 volt here. My two cup holders, I've got my drive mode selector, sport, normal, smart, and custom. Here, I've got my auto hold function, and I do have a QI wireless charger that is brilliantly located down here. You've got kind of this spring-loaded door here, and all you do is take your phone, stick it down there. I have an extra large uh, Pixel 3 XL, and it still fits in there, no problem. It won't roll around at all. It's completely out of the way, but then you can just grab it really quickly in quick accents. This is a really smart wireless charger design, probably one of the smartest I've seen. And even though that this is not the top trim K5, we still have a panoramic roof that goes all the way into the back seats, which is really nice. And the glass does open nice and big. Now I have the Monroney here, so I can tell you how much this car costs exactly. The GT line is gonna start at $25,390, which is not bad at all. I think that's a really good price for everything you get here, but not everything is standard. That Wolf Grape paint is $445, and you do have to get something called the GT front wheel drive premium package. That's gonna get you that power sunroof. You're gonna get LED headlights, forward collision avoidance assist. You're gonna get smart cruise control. You're gonna get that excellent wireless phone charger. And this GT line red interior is included in the price. So as tested, you're gonna be paying about 27,435 for this car, which I think is frankly excellent for the value you get. I definitely would add that premium package there. Now let's go ahead and check out the nicer EX trim level. All right, so now that we just stepped out of the interior of the GT line, let's go ahead and check out the EX, which is the top trim until the GT arrives later this year. So you can tell straight away that while the GT line is focused on being sporty, we had the red seats, we had metallic trim. Here, it's focused a little bit more on being luxurious. We've got this faux wood trim that I think feels really nice. Not quite as nice as what you'll get in the fully loaded Telluride, but pretty close. You can tell that Kia learned a lot from the Telluride interior to make this K5 interior a really nice place to sit. Now we have some things that are a little bit different on this EX trim that, are, that aren't on the GT line. We have the same center dials in the middle. I'm a little disappointed that this upper trim level didn't get a nicer helper display there in the middle, maybe virtual gauges. I know Kia does those really well, but what we do get is a big upgrade in the dashboard here. We go from an eight inch screen to a 10.2 two five inch. This is kind of your main home screen. You just have like a clock. If I scroll over here, here's where I can get all of my other pages. I love this kind of purplish blue design that they have here on the screen here. This is really awesome. And we've got some really awesome features in here as well. We've got our sounds of nature. I've used this before on Kia products before. So you can see we have lively forest. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that down because it's quite loud. We have a couple other ones. I can have open air cafe. So it sounds like you're like sitting in like a Tuscan village cafe, warm fireplace. I can hear the crackling of a fire. Kind of weird. I don't know when you're really ever going to use those, but it's a neat feature. Nevertheless, we also have a voice memo button. Kia has been doing these for years. I think these are kind of interesting. Again, I don't know what you're going to use it for, but if I hit record here, hello, next automotive journalist who drives this car. This is Jared Rosenholz from carbuzz.com, letting you know how weird I am while I'm doing the review of the Kia K5. There we go. Another journalist can find that later on when, when they go to review this car. You also have your map, which is very nice and large here. As you can see, we have a split screen, so I can have my voice memos here. I can have my temperature. I can have my clock. Love how easy this is to activate and deactivate. You can just make that go away and have a big wide map, or I can bring that up over here. Now, the one thing that I will say 
Two things actually that I don't love about this 10.25 inch screen versus the eight inch screen that we just topped out of is, first of all, no tuning knob, so it's not as easy to change radio stations. That's a little bit annoying. And then secondly, you say Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are grayed out. That's because I don't have a cable in here because I'm only driving the car for a day. This screen does not do wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, even though the smaller screen does. I really have no idea why I'm gonna ask Kia why and hopefully get an answer. If I do, I'll put it down in the description below because I'm very curious why the bigger screen does not get that feature and the smaller screen does. Now down here, we have a lot of the same stuff we saw in the GT line, excellent storage cup holders, the same shifter that I'm not a huge fan of that feels kind of chintzy uh, to my feel. But what we do get in this one is heated and ventilated seats and a heated steering wheel, which is a nice addition on this EX trim. So let's go ahead and check out the Monroni while we have it here. The EX trim being the most expensive starts at 27,990, which is so reasonable to me. That's a very reasonable price for all the stuff you get, but some of this is extra. You do have to add the EX premium package for 3,400 bucks. That's gonna add that bigger uh, touchscreen with Bose audio, which I'm kind of questioning whether or not I would actually get that, to be honest, because you lose the wireless CarPlay in Android Auto. You get a power uh, front seat with lumbar, you get the heated steering wheel, you get forward co uh, collision avoidance assist, you get smart cruise control with stop and go, you get safe exit assist, LED rear combination, lights, and a memory seat and outside mirrors, all for $31,390, which again is such a low price. I think that is a great value for what is pretty much a fully loaded car. This thing has all the safety tech. It has some safety that I didn't even know it had. Uh, for example, when you're stopped at a light and the car ahead of you moves away, it alerts you if you were on your phone or doing something stupid with the radio, it'll let you know. It'll give you a little beep and you know to pull off. This car is just so smart and there's so many other little things I wish I could show you in this car that Kia has just designed so well. And it So I don't have exact measurements from Kia on the K5's back seat, but I will say that I think it feels very roomy in here. Look at all of the leg room I have here, headroom as well. I'm only five foot nine on a good day, so I'm not the perfect person to measure this, but my camera guy sat back here and he's about six foot two, and he had plenty of headroom, plenty of leg room as well, so he can be the better judge of this back here. He sat in a lot of sedans where he's sitting like this, and this was not one of them. Now we do have air vents back here, as well, although you do not get those over there on that GT line, only the EX trim gets access to air vents, and I do have two USB chargers here to charge up my devices. Now, I think Kia has done a great job spacing the back seat here, but you are probably gonna lose out back there in the trunk. Unlike the back seats, which are extremely roomy, I don't think the trunk is quite as big. I don't have an exact SAE measurement for this yet, but just looking at it, it doesn't look quite as big as some other mid-size sedans I've tested. I think the main issue for me here is this rather small opening here. I wish they would have kind of made it op open a little bit wider, although I think that sleek low roof line probably eats into the ability for this to open up real wide. I do have two poles here that are gonna be able to fold down the rear seats to open up to more space, but I think there are a little bit uh, sedans in this segment that are more voluminous than the K5. All right, so since we were already in the back seat of the EX, I thought, let's take that one out for a drive because the two don't drive drastically different from each other, even though the GT line sounds like it would be a lot sportier. You're gonna have to wait for the fully fledged GT model. See, the GT line is mostly appearance. GT is where all of that extra performance is going to come in. So let's start off with the engine. Both of them have the same engine, a 1.6 liter turbocharged four cylinder. We've seen this across the Hyundai Kia lineup and other models before. Here it produces 180 horsepower on 195 pound-feet of torque, and those numbers aren't stupendous uh, for this segment. The Camry and Accord both have more with their base setups, but that torque number of 195 pound-feet is what is the key number. The pound-feet of torque is very nice, so if I go to just accelerate smoothly, quickly, very effortlessly without 
having too much of a fuss, that's that good torque number for you there. And that power is gonna be routed out to a new eight-speed automatic transmission, replacing the old six-speed you used to get in the Optima. And the eight-speed is pretty good. It shifts very smoothly. There's not a lot of disruption in the power. It's not jerky, uh, nor is it sluggish like a CVT. I think people who really don't like the feel, the, the slurriness of a CVT are really gonna enjoy this gearbox because it works as an automatic well. Now there's no paddles on the wheel or anything crazy like that to get dynamic with it, but if I go ahead and put my foot down, I got a nice little downshift there. Now the engine, doesn't sound great. It's just a four cylinder engine. It kind of growls and groans a little bit, but it does get up to speed reasonably quickly. Uh, you're not gonna go ballistically fast in this version of the K5. Now, if you do want to have a little bit more power, a little bit more grunt underneath you, they are going to be releasing a GT version of this car. Now that's gonna get a much bigger engine, two and a half liter four cylinder engine, turbocharged as well, sending its power out through an eight speed dual clutch transmission. So that's really interesting. I really can't wait to try that. Unfortunately, Kia didn't have one available when it sent me these two K5s. That that one's gonna be available later in the fall of 2020. So by the time you watch this video, that might already be available. Now that engine produces 290 horsepower, so really big gap, 110 horsepower, more than this base engine, and 311 pound-feet of torque. So that's gonna be a really interesting alternative to like the Accord 2.0T and the Camry TRD with its V6 engine. So I'm really excited to drive that. That's gonna hit zero to 60 at about 5.8 seconds. It is front-wheel drive only though. You can get this 1.6 liter engine with all-wheel drive, but you can't get get the sportier, more powerful one with all-wheel drive, which I think is an interesting choice, but I feel like very few people are probably gonna want both, the big engine and all-wheel drive. So let's talk a little bit about how the K5 drives. It's very comfortable, very smooth. I took this car out on the highway today and it was very compliant, very comfortable. I noticed that this EX one is a little bit quieter. It might have some added sound deadening, although I possibly could have been imagining a, that as well. It could be due to a difference in tire size, wheel size, tire size. But this car rides very well, it's very compliant. It doesn't body roll too much when I pitch it into the corner. Although remember, this is not the GT model. That's gonna have have different suspension, brakes, all of that. It's gonna be a much sportier model. We do have some drive modes to play around with here. We've got the smart mode, which Hyundai Kia do. I love smart mode. Basically what that's gonna do is, if I start to drive a little faster, it's gonna recognize that, put it in sport mode automatically. When I stop driving fast, it'll put it back in normal. We've got our normal mode, sport mode. It's gonna tighten up the steering just a little bit. The steering in this car is very light. It does weight up considerably in sport mode, I would say it's pretty accurate. I think it's maybe a, a little bit more accurate than what you would get in a Camry. It's towards the more accurate side of this car. Now this isn't like an exciting sports car by any stretch of the imagination, but it certainly isn't boring to drive either. And then we've got our custom mode where we can adjust uh, some of the settings of the car uh, on your own. So that's interesting as well. Kia gives you a nice little option there depending on how you wanna drive the car. And so I will say that I'm very impressed with how the K5 drives. It's quiet, it's comfortable, it's fuel efficient as well. You're gonna be getting about 36 MPG on the highway in this car, uh, which is frankly phenomenal, very good in this class. I'm sure the GT model is not gonna do as well. So I'm very impressed. I can't wait to get behind the GT model though, because I think that's where the wow factor is really gonna lie. So that was the 2021 Kia K5. Pricing for these starts at just over $23,000, making it a great value compared to like the Camrys and the Accords of the world. Now, this car starts at about $28,000 as you've seen it. This one's about $32,000. And I think that both of them are excellent values with the amount of stuff that you get inside. I don't have the pricing for all wheel drive, but I think the fact that Kia is offering these in all wheel drive is great. It's gonna make them so much more 
marketable for cold weather climates and things like that. For people who love the way this car looks and don't want an SUV, but they live somewhere where they absolutely have to have all wheel drive. Now I'm really excited to drive the GT model. That's gonna start at just over $30,000 and I'm sure it's gonna go upwards from there with options. But I think if you're not that interested in power, this regular, Kia K5 is an awesome entry into the midsize sedan segment and it's an excellent reason for why you shouldn't necessarily pick a crossover. We really hope you've liked this first drive of the 2021 Kia K5. For more information on this car, be sure to check the link in the description below. That'll take you over to carbuzz.com where we have a full written review of the 2021 K5. And as always, be sure to leave a like, hit the notification bell to be alerted of our latest videos. I'll see you next time.